The big story in Major League Baseball over the last week has been the tragic death of the great Hank Aaron, the man who I and many others consider to be the true home run king in baseball. But we should not let that force us to look past this Hall of Fame election that has just gone down because it is one of the most interesting ones that I've seen and really opens up a lot of questions as to how the MLB Hall of Fame is going to treat its players going forward. Let's discuss. So the big headline from this Hall of Fame election is that no player was voted into the Hall of Fame. For the first time since 2013, we will have a Hall of Fame induction that includes nobody. Now, during the summer, we will see a Hall of Fame induction ceremony. It will be for the players that were elected last year that missed out on their ceremony because of the uh, coronavirus pandemic. But this opens up a lot of questions, not only questions about the voting system itself, which we'll talk about, but questions about some of the players who continue to be right on the cusp and are not quite going to get in. So first, let's talk about the voting system. For anyone who's not aware, the way that MLB voting works is a player has to be retired for five years, and then they will be on the ballot for a maximum of 10 years, and you have all of the Hall of Fame electors that vote. They can vote for a maximum of 10 players to get into the Hall of Fame, and if any single player has at least 75% of the Hall of Fame electors voting for them, then they will be inducted into the Hall of Fame. So it works much differently than it does in in any other sport, and it leads to much smaller Hall of Fame classes in baseball than what we see in uh, most other American sports. And so usually you end up with between two and five uh, members of a Hall of Fame class any given year. This year, there were not a whole lot of new uh, players eligible for the Hall of Fame, at least ones that we would that we would consider to be, you know, can't miss first ballot type Hall of Famers. Um, so people like Scott Rowland, Omar Vizquel, Todd Helton, Billy Wagner, you know, people like that, that you wouldn't say, okay, these are first ballot guys, um, but certainly people that that may very well get in at some point. And it's worth noting, because you can be on for 10 years, the way that, that uh, MLB Hall of Fame voting works, it's... It's almost like it's almost like a tradition, you know, you have to be at a certain level of player to get in on the first ballot. So, you know, in recent history, you're looking at people like Mariano Rivera, Ken Griffey Jr., those those that's the level of player that needs to that you need to be to be able to get in on the first ballot with the electors knowing that as the years go on, the, they're probably going to vote to get you in. So a lot of these guys will end up being in the Hall of Fame, and certainly when it when we look at the last time there were there was no one in a Hall of Fame class, like I mentioned, 2013. I think it ended up being that seven players that were on the ballot in 2013 ended up being in, uh, inducted into the Hall of Fame at some point. What I really like about the MLB Hall of Fame is that they really treat it with a lot of reverence, you know. So I've been to the MLB Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, New York. It is beautiful. You should go at some point if you have any, not even necessarily if you're a baseball fan. If you're a sports fan, you got to go. And they really, it's so much about the history of the game of baseball, you know, America's pastime. I One, one of my favorite pictures that I have is a picture of the first ever newspaper article written about a baseball game, and it was in like 1868 or something like that. I mean, that's the history of this game. And so they really take that seriously. So when you go into the Hall of Fame wing of the building, you see the busts of some of the great players, some of the great managers, you know, you, you see everyone's plaques on the, with their names. I mean, it's really, it's, it's really amazing, and it shows you just how much they care about the history of the game of baseball. That's a big reason why they are so selective when it comes to Hall of Fame voting. However, it's worth noting that in today's society, what we're used to when it comes to Hall of Fame voting, we're used to entire groups of players getting in at any given time. It's hard not to feel like the MLB and the BBWAA, the organization that runs the Hall of Fame, that they're just kind of behind the times a little bit. That the idea of having no players elected to the Hall of Fame in a given year, that that's kind of arcane. It doesn't really it doesn't really keep up anymore with with the way that sports are moving. 
And I think to deal with this first issue, I think that what we should be doing is we should be encouraging every other league to operate more like the MLB and the BBWAA than less, than the reverse. Because the thing is that the Hall of Fame, it should be, I mean, it has to be a distinction. I mean, the level of player that you need to have been or the level of coach or manager or general manager that you need to have been in order to get in there because you're talking about some of the greats. I mean, when you talk about, you know, in, in baseball, for instance, when you are talking about sharing the same rarefied air as people like Hank Aaron, rest in peace, Babe Ruth, Jackie Robinson, you know, the, the, you're talking about players that shaped the course of baseball, shaped the course of professional sports, and in a lot of ways, shaped the course of American history. I mean, not to completely oversell it, but when you think about Jackie Robinson, you know, at a time when when the civil rights movement was going on, how important was it for Jackie Robinson to do what he did? That's the kind of player that you are about to step in there with. And so to me, we should be incredibly selective about who goes in there. It, it You know, the idea of having a Hall of Fame career, we throw that term around almost as if it means good career, you know, or, or above average, a player that we'll remember in five years. But the Hall of Fame is about players that we'll remember in 20 years. And so when you look at some of the players that get into the Hall of Fame in the NFL or in the NBA or something like that, not to say that they're not fantastic players, but to say who who among them are we going to remember going forward? Who among them will will we look 20 years in the future and say, oh, I, I remember him. I remember watching him play. That's the real question. And I think that's something that the Baseball Hall of Fame, the National Baseball Hall of Fame has really nailed. Everyone in there, if you are a baseball fan, you you either know, you, you watch depending on your age, or you've heard of. I mean, there are very few names that you'd be like, I have never heard of this person ever. And to me, that, that's not the only metric, but the idea that this is the place where where the Titans go. I mean, looking at it, looking at look at it kind of like Mount Rushmore, you know. If you've got four names to put on there, who are the four? And that to me is how Hall of Fame voting should be done. So in that sense, I really like what the National Baseball Hall of Fame is doing. But that's not the main reason that I wanted to make this video. I think there's a lot of people, you know, because of the diminishing popularity of baseball, I've been a baseball fan my entire life. It's been my favorite sport for most of my life. Um, so uh, there's a lot of people out there that I think might be a little bit confused on how the voting works or, or just looking for another perspective on why some of us as baseball fans might agree with this decision of not putting anybody in. But the big issue here is who didn't get in this time specifically so there are three big names that everyone's pointing at and saying this is a big deal that they didn't get in kurt schilling barry bonds and roger clemens now kurt schilling is a different situation barry bonds and roger clemens are not in for one very obvious reason which is steroid use i have a very hard line stance on steroid use personally I think if you have used steroids, if you've been proven to use steroids in a season that would have contributed to your Hall of Fame career, you should not get in under any circumstances. So Barry Bonds, obvious steroid user at the time that he was breaking home run records, should not be in the Hall of Fame. And indeed, in the Hall of Fame, when you go to the wing of the building that has all of the records in the history of baseball, Barry Bonds does have an asterisk by his name as the home run king, which is why I mentioned that Hank Aaron, to me and many others, is the true home run king of baseball because he was not a steroid user when he broke that record. So that covers Barry Bonds. It covers Roger Clemens, who was using steroids when he won the Cy Young. It, it covers several other people. Now, the issue of people in the Hall of Fame already who later on we found used steroids uh, that is an entirely separate issue, you know, that, that I'm not going to get into here because that gets into can we remove players from the Hall of Fame? Does it that that's a whole separate thing. But the idea of putting players in the Hall of Fame that we know going into the vote did not use steroids or did use steroids. That to me, it, it's pretty hard line. Now, 
Next year, we'll see some big newcomers. Alex Rodriguez, David Ortiz, Jimmy Rollins, Mark Teixeira. These are some newcomers. This is according to USA Today. Now, in the case of Alex Rodriguez, this is a player that I have a whole lot of history with in terms of how I've felt about him, and I've been very open with it. Um, when I was growing up in the 2000s, the, the Mitch Report came out in, I want to say, like 2005, 2006 maybe. The Mitchell Report comes out, and it implicates all of these people using steroids, and Barry Bonds was included in the names of people who are using steroids, and then Barry Bonds goes on to break the home run record. Well, I grew up a Seattle Mariners fan, and so Alex Rodriguez is, you know, one of the most incredible baseball players that we've ever seen, and certainly in the last, certainly in the last 30 years, uh, in terms of his athletic ability, everything he does, and so you're looking at what he's doing, and you're saying, okay, this guy, and this is what I'm saying, this guy is going to break all of the records. So it doesn't matter that Barry Bonds used steroids. It doesn't matter about any of this stuff because Alex Rodriguez is going to break these records, and we're we're never going to have to worry about it again. Well, Alex Rodriguez pops for steroids, and everything happens with that. And so, you know, for me, and I think for a lot of other people, it kind of felt like a betrayal. This guy was going to be the guy. Um, and so he's going to be on the ballot. Uh, David Ortiz, which, uh, according to the New York Times, he popped for steroids in 2003. Now, he was never suspended or anything, but of course, 2003 was before they started cracking down on steroid use. But again, you remember what I said earlier, if you have, if you've popped for steroids at any point, uh, in a career that would that would contribute to your Hall of Fame induction, that's what should be the disqualifying factor. Now that may seem to be just a random uh, a random caveat that I've thrown in there to protect David Ortiz because I think David Ortiz deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. But in reality, lots of players in history have have uh, popped positive for different performance enhancing drugs, and it can be for multiple different reasons. The difference between David Ortiz, who pops once for PEDs in 2003, uh, which when I believe, I think he was still on the Minnesota Twins at the time, uh, the difference between that and someone like Clemens or Rodriguez or Bonds, who were injecting anabolic steroids in their prime to help them win baseball games and break records, to me, that is a hard difference. That is the hard line right there. And if that's what you're doing, you know, it's one different... It's one thing to take pills. It's one thing to, you know, maybe take something to get over an injury. I mean, it's still not right, and baseball should have suspended him for it, but it's not disqualifying. To take anabolic steroids specifically to increase your own performance on the field, like we saw during the steroid era, that to me is beyond the pale. It should be a disqualifying factor for anybody who is voting for the Hall of Fame. So, what is my point here? My point is that the Hall of Fame got it right. They got it right. Outside of Kurt Schilling, which which that's going to be the name that you see uh, brought up alongside Bonds and um, and uh, Clemens. That, Schilling's going to be the name. He has nothing to do with the steroids, and it, I don't think it has anything to do with with politics or anything like that. Like you'll see a lot of people say, I think that has everything to do with Kurt Schilling, uh, Kurt Schilling's play on the field. Personally, I think. I think Kurt Schilling should be in the Hall of Fame, but that's a that's a personal thing. Um, that's just my own opinion. But in terms of Bonds and Clemens, and the next year when we see Rodriguez and even Mark Teixeira, who was involved in some steroid issues, I mean, anyone who we know was an anabol anabolic steroid user. You know, I the Hall of Fame got it right in this call. They keep it exclusive, and they keep out the steroid users, the known steroid users that used in their primes while they were playing the game of baseball. That is the right decision. And for Bonds and Clemens next year, that it's the final year. They're done. The only way you can get in after that 10 after that 10 year mark is if you're elected by the veterans committee, which they'll take players that were overlooked or uh, you know that didn't get in in their 10 years but but across history we realize they should be in the Hall of Fame. They usually take a couple players. But they're not going to take steroid users. They've been pretty clear on that. So if Bonds and Clemens don't get in, they're done. That's it. They're not in the Hall of Fame. And to me, that's the right call. Because you can never say if they would have had Hall of Fame careers without the use of anabolic steroids. And the really sad thing is, for a lot of these guys, for Bonds, for Roger Clemens, for Alex Rodriguez, 
a lot of them probably would have gotten into the Hall of Fame had, even without the steroid use. That's the really sad thing, especially in the case of Alex Rodriguez, when you see what he was doing before he started using. That was, I mean, that he could have been the greatest player ever without the steroids, honestly. If you remember him in his years in Seattle, his early years with the Texas Rangers, that was the level of player he was. So it's sad that a lot of these guys tarnished their own legacy going forward in the game of baseball because of their decision to use steroids, but unfortunately that's what they did, and I don't think that we should uh, essentially give them a lighter sentence, meaning well, I don't think we should elect Bonds and Clemens in their final year just because people start to say, oh, well, these guys have to be in, right? Steroids or not, they have to be in. No, they don't. They blew that chance because they decided to use steroids. That was their choice. And so they, they gave up that opportunity. And I think that should be a pretty hard line for anybody. And and as as painful as it is to say, because I love Alex Rodriguez in everything else other than a baseball player. I love him. I love his commentary. I love everything else he does. Uh, but he shouldn't be in either. He made the decision to use steroids the way he did, and this is the consequence. The Baseball Hall of Fame represents the rarefied air. You are going. You are being put alongside Babe Ruth, Mickey Mantle, Jackie Robinson, Hank Aaron. You know, that's, that's the names that you're being put alongside. And so, if you use steroids, you don't deserve to have your name along with, with the other greats, the other titans of the, in the history of baseball. It's just that simple. But, if you have a different opinion, please let me know. This is an open discussion and one that, that, that really uh, causes a lot of tension between baseball purists, of which I consider myself a member, and uh, some more, some more forward-thinking, I want to say forward-thinking, some more uh, modern fans. Uh, that don't have those same sensibilities. This has been a, a point, a central point of argument for a long, long time. So if you find yourself on either side, please uh, let me know down below in the comments. Let's discuss, discuss with other people, hear their opinions. This is a topic that a lot of people can have a lot of varying opinions on, and the discussion, uh, in my opinion, is always interesting. So thank you so much, as always, for uh, watching this video. Subscribe to GA Sports for this and all of our content now and in the future. We appreciate you.